This video is going to show us how to use Eclipse as an IDE for our Java applications. Before you install Eclipse, you must install Java. So select the version of Java you prefer and download it to your computer. Please note that you want to install a JDK, a Java Development Kit, and not a JRE or Java Runtime Environment. Here we're going to load the Java 8 JDK as an example. From the Eclipse download page, you want to download the Eclipse IDE for Java Enterprise Developers. This version of the IDE will give you access to lots of useful features, including features to help you develop HTML pages. When you launch Eclipse, it will ask you for your default workspace. This is the folder hierarchy in which you will store your Eclipse projects. You can have multiple workspaces in Eclipse, but for now we can set up our default one. When Eclipse launches, it will bring you to the main screen. And you have this welcome page which you can immediately close. From the file menu, you want to select New. And then you want to select Other at the very bottom because you want to select a Java project to get started. So we'll select Java project, we'll click Next. It, the project will want a name. Your project names should be in lowercase. So we'll say hello. We will finish this off. Now we have the Hello Project, as you can see. It will also ask you if you want to use the Java Perspective, which is useful because it's optimized for Java programming. And here we see in our Package Explorer, we see our new project called Hello. If we open it up, we can see a source directory. That's where our Java source files are going to go. We can right click the source directory and we can say new again. This time we'll make a new package. Now a package is just a container to hold similar code. We're going to call this package v1 for version 1. Notice that the package is empty. It's a big white square there. But if I right click that v1 and I say new class, then I can create a new Java class. The class I'm going to create, I want to call driver, because this is going to have the main method of the program. To get the main method for free, I just check the box below, asking for the main method, and I click finish. And then the program will appear, and it will have the main method already coded for me with a to-do comment stub, which I will get rid of. And then I will just type system.out.println hello world. And notice it's not indented very nicely. This is a great Eclipse feature. We can do a control A to select the entire block of code and then a control I and it will automatically indent it for us. Clicking the green run arrow prompts me to run the program and asks me to save the file and when it runs you can see hello world in the bottom which is the console output. So here I've made another class person and I have some instance variables a string for the first name a string for the last name and a local date time for the date of birth. Notice that local date time is not recognized by Eclipse because it's not part of the standard libraries. But if I hover over local date time, it will tell me different fixes that Eclipse would suggest. And the first one is to import local date time. And when I do that, the import statement comes right in. That's very helpful for commonly used constructs like hash maps, array lists, really anything. The other thing I can do now, I can put my cursor right there below the instance variables. Go to the source menu and I can type in generate constructors using fields. And if I click all of these, these are all selected, I can say generate. And now I have a constructor 
for those fields. It has a call to super, which I can get rid of if I don't need to have it. And there's a constructor. If I want another constructor, I can just go to source and I can generate constructors using fields. This time I won't put the date of birth in there. I'll have a two argument constructor. Click generate and there's the next constructor. Again, I'll get rid of super. We can also generate getters and setters in much the same way. If I go to source and I say generate getters and setters, I can choose what I want. I'll do a select all and generate. And then you will see set last name, um, get date of birth, uh, set date of birth. All my getters and setters are already set for me. In Eclipse, you will notice that anything that is in the buffer and has not been saved yet has a star in front of it. And over here, there's a button to save the file, or my favorite, the save all, which will save all of your changes. And now the person class is saved. Now that that's been saved, we can do something else pretty interesting. We can right click on the package again, say new class. This time we'll make a student class. And the student class will have a super class of person. And here, down below, I have this checkbox for the constructors from the super class, which I could turn on, and then click Finish. And here's my student class. Notice that it has the constructors for student that have already built into this call to super for the parent class. Another good thing about Eclipse is the ability to use this browser to go right to your methods. Here is the set date of birth method. And I click on it and I come right to it. I can go right to the date of birth instance variable. Now very often you may want to change the names of your variables and that can be done through refactoring. So I can highlight date of birth. I can right click and say refactor. And I can just do a rename. When I do a rename, it lets me type what I want. I can just make this DOB for date of birth. And notice that it changed that reference everywhere else in the project. Here's another tip I like. Have you ever made a lot of code and then you make changes to it and you break what you had and you have a hard time going back to it? I like to use packages in Eclipse's versions. That's why I call the first package v1. You can see here I made a second package called v2. And if I wanted to continue to work on my classes, I could highlight them all and then do a control drag to the next package. And what will happen is that now I have the exact same classes in their version 2, and I can make my changes in version 2 and leave version 1 alone. That's a nifty trick. Here's another very useful tip. A lot of times if you're working in different workspaces, it's hard to remember where you are. So we can go up to the window, Preferences, and from here you can set a lot of the preferences for Eclipse. One of my favorites is under General and under Workspace. And it's this button right here that says Show the Full Workspace Path. And if I click this, I'm not sure why that's not a default, it's a great choice. Now you can see on my title bar, it shows me exactly which workspace I am using. The last thing we want to do is to make sure the Java FX libraries come into Eclipse. Java FX is sometimes bundled with Java and sometimes not. If it's not part of your Eclipse environment, we can install new software. You go to the Help menu and you come down to Install New Software. And you want to work with all the available sites. And just type in E parentheses FX and that should do some kind of filtering and eventually we will see the Java EFX libraries appear.
and here they are and then I can just click the EFX clips integration bundles click next and this is going to bring the FX libraries into Eclipse except the terms of the conditions and now you're set after installing the Java FX libraries you will have to restart Eclipse and you can tell if they are there you can look at any of your project folders you can look at a JRE system library notice that the system library should include JDK not a JRE and when you open it up you should see this file the JFXRT jar and that contains all the references you need for a JavaFX application you can see all the different JavaFX libraries here and to show you this um, here is a GUI we created where we make a GUI that extends an application an application is a JavaFX construct if you hover over application, you should be able to see import application from Java FX. Another thing to show you is how well Eclipse can generate HTML based Java doc files for you. Notice that this is my person class and I have fully Java docked the methods and the instance variables and I'll finish it up by Java docking the class. This is a class to represent a person object. All right. Now, what we would do is we go up here to, we highlight the project folder and we go to the project and we do generate Java doc. And the Java doc should be found in your JDK. So you have to go to your JDK and you have to look for javadoc.exe. Usually your Java is loaded into your program files directory. And then when you're done, you can determine what level of Java documentation to create. If you leave it at the default, you will only generate Java doc for the publicly available uh, interfaces. But what you could do is change that to private and then you would get full documentation for everything. And then the destination is generally defaulted to the folder of your current workspace called doc. So we'll leave that alone. That's nice. And we'll click finish. And we'll say yes to all. And then Java doc will generate. If there's any problems with the Java doc, you'll see an error or a warning so for example we saw an error here that says there's no parameter for first name so that meant that my Java doc was wrong someplace and I can go right to it on line 65 and you can see here I had the parameter last name but actually the parameter was taking first name so this is really helpful to not only generate your Java doc, but to test your Java doc. Let's try this again. We will generate the Java doc one more time. Click finish. And hopefully there's no red this time. And what you'll see when it's done is this doc folder and the doc folder has different files. This is for my version two and there's an index.html. I can right click on that and I can say open with, I can open it with a web browser. And it brings up a web browser right in Eclipse and it shows me my package. And here's the person class. And look at this. We have wonderful Java doc describing all of the fields describing the constructors, describing all of the methods. This way, if you Java doc while you're working in Eclipse, all you need to do is generate it, and then you have your documentation for your program already 
developed in a nice HTML format. And that's basically it. There's a lot to Eclipse, and including how to run a program in debug mode and many other advanced features, but this should be enough to get you started. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you find that Eclipse is a very useful IDE for your future Java programming.